You're not going to meet the perfect boy with a 4.0 GPA who happens to be the captain of the football team but also the president of the Save the Turtles Club. What's up YouTube? Welcome and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, make sure to click that subscribe button wherever that is. Hit that notification bell so you know what I'm posting. And yeah, let's just go straight into the video. So hopefully you guys watched my first video which was titled 12 things that I wish I knew before my freshman year of college. This is going to be a video very similar to that but I wanted to get a little bit more specific and give straight up tips but in smaller categories which you'll see. So the way it worked for me at our new student orientation, which was in the summer, we met with an advisor from our major and they sat with us and helped us pick our classes. Now, I don't know how it's gonna be for you guys because of all this COVID. And I don't even know if you guys are gonna have in-person orientations or not. I really hope you guys do, but if you guys are doing your orientations on campus, then don't worry too much because you'll have that guidance. Now, when it comes to actually picking classes, I have a couple of different things I'd like to recommend. First of all, highly do not recommend at 8 a.m. I'm someone who really does not like mornings I guess I like my mornings with to myself so I did not want to have to be awake by 7 a.m. or sometimes even earlier because the, maybe the bathroom on your floor for maintenance between 7 or something so you have to be ready before then and it's just a whole thing I did not take any 8 a.m.s because I know myself and that just would not have ended well I have some friends who took 8 a.m.s they regretted it they just did not enjoy having to wake up that early so I don't know I don't think you should do it because you might end up skipping and then that's a whole thing which I also talked about in my other video you don't want to be skipping class so just don't put yourself in that position another thing is scheduling how you see would be best fit for you so some people they have one day in the week where they don't have any classes at all or some people have classes just Monday Wednesday Friday because they will need those two days of break me personally I know I needed to have classes every day because I need to keep myself busy and I know that if I have too many off days then I'm honestly not even gonna use them for good some people know how to use their time and they will take that one day in the week and they will dedicate it to homework but I'm not like that. I would have just ended up wasting it. So I didn't feel that was necessary for me. So yeah, I had classes every day. But it's really manageable because a big difference from high school and college is you're not taking like seven or eight classes a day. You're taking like maybe five to six classes and they're not all on every day. Unless again, you choose to make it like that. But like I had three classes Monday, Wednesday, Friday and I believe two classes on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So it was really easy to not get overwhelmed by the amount of classes per day. And my last thing for this section, I would say pick classes that you genuinely find interesting. So you're gonna have gen eds that you wanna take care of, but you have literally all four years to do it. A lot of people like to knock them out early on in their first year, but I personally wanna spread them out so that I know I have a couple easy classes along the way when I'm taking harder classes. If you wanna do that, that's cool too. But I know for me, I took the recommended classes for my major, but then I had like a free slot and they're like, yeah, just pick something out of, you know, whatever category it was. And I ended up really loving that class, actually. It was a spirituality class. We read a lot of interesting books, and it was pretty cool, so I really liked that. Definitely don't be close-minded about classes. Take a class that you never would have thought you would have taken. It might be completely unrelated from your major. It could be something you've always thought about, or just something random, honestly. But, yeah. One more thing I wanted to add for scheduling classes, actually. At NSO, they might try to tell you don't use Rate My Professor because it's not that accurate. But honestly, so far, from what I've seen it's kind of accurate what I did was though I checked the reviews after I took them so I could see if I trusted them and most of the comments about the professors were exactly what I was thinking throughout the semester I kind of winged it but I was lucky because I didn't end up getting any crazy professors or anything I was like okay obviously you can't take it all to face value because there are gonna be those extremists who either really really love the professor even though everyone else hated them or people who really really hate the professor just because they failed but everyone else loved them so Take it with a grain of salt, but don't be afraid to use it. I think it's pretty accurate so far. First thing, don't buy unnecessary clothing. Unless it's for an event or something, I don't see why you need to be shopping that much. We're all broke college students, we get it. You're not really gonna be going anywhere. Honestly, I'm not gonna hold you. There was some times when I wear the same outfit on Monday and Tuesday because I was going to different classes, different people were gonna see me, so I was like, you gotta do what you gotta do. But yeah, I would definitely try to avoid that. Do not eat out too much. Oh my god. Okay, I go to UMass Amherst and I am surrounded by so many good places to eat. But honestly, I'm proud of myself for how much I did not eat out. I definitely did go to like Texas Roadhouse a couple times. But it was only for like my birthday, a couple of my friends' birthdays. We didn't force it, you know? And I only went there when I knew I could afford it. Well, that's a lie. <laughs> you know, that's fine. We're working on it. Um, But don't be like me. Do not spend too much 
enough when it comes to food because you have those meal swipes you have those dining dollars or dining points you don't really need to be spending out other places at my school those dining dollars they could count to actual restaurants that are nearby also side note don't waste all those too the first month of school i was mostly just using my swipes and stuff but then when i actually started going to one of the dining areas that requires the dining dollars instead of meal swipes i was like i have unlimited dining dollars i ended up basically finishing it all by the end of the first semester and i was like damn like it was like maybe 250 i think spend reasonably when it comes to your actual money but also when it comes to your dining dollars and stuff use your swipes because that's why you have them Ooh, also do not buy your textbooks yet i'm so happy that people told me this before so i didn't make the mistake but i know so many people buy textbooks and then they don't even end up using them definitely wait till the first couple classes when your professor's saying what you're actually going to need because i ended up not even needing to actually buy any textbooks even second semester i only ended up buying i think one book for one class which i didn't even really need actually looking back but i definitely did not overspend on any textbooks for any class so definitely wait some classes you'll really need them but most of the time i feel like you don't or you can find them really cheap so don't buy them straight from the school store or in the summer definitely wait till you actually get there because you can also probably find someone that is willing to sell it to you for cheap who took the class already so one thing I would definitely say is you need to set your boundaries from the jump, whether they're your friends from back home or if you met them in the summer or it went completely random. So the way it was supposed to work for us was our RA was supposed to sit us down. She was supposed to mediate for me and my roommate. And then we'd like, I think, go in detail about like what times we like the lights off, how many times we can have people over and stuff like that. But we had like an issue with my RA leaving. So we actually never had that sit down talk. I mean, granted, it's not like you definitely need the RA. You can obviously do it on your own too that could be nice but i feel like if you're someone like me who's kind of passive or just quiet or likes to be as little of a bother as possible you might be a little too shy to go ahead and directly say oh no i hate when x y and z but just try to if you can or hopefully your ra will do it if they don't already have that system in place you can always ask like hey i would like someone to mediate with me and my roommate because i don't really know how to say this i'm not really comfortable saying it one-on-one -on -one. so that's always an option too also your roommate does not have to be your best friend you guys can simply be acquaintances me and my roommate were not that close i feel like we started to get a little closer second semester honestly but even then we weren't the best of friends but we got along really well she was pretty cool but you guys can just be that just cool it doesn't have to go farther than that if it does that's cool obviously but don't force it is basically what i'm trying to say so as i also mentioned in my first video you need to get involved you cannot make friends in your room i know surprise it doesn't work like that that's what i thought too you have to interact with people to actually make these friendships make sure you're only doing things you're comfortable with like i also mentioned in my other video but definitely push yourself so my first semester i made the mistake of not getting involved that kind of resulted in me not having that many friends and sticking to myself a lot but then second semester i was more adjusted so i joined joined Habitat for Humanity and I joined a psych peer mentoring program which was probably the best decision I could have made because I was able to get partnered up with a senior but I also had access to all the other people that weren't my direct partners. We just gained a lot of information through that and a lot of guidance so that's always good too to join something based off of your major because it might make you feel a little more comfortable within your major and you might open yourself up to more opportunities. That psych program was also where I met one of my new closest friends so I was really thankful that I did that. I would also say do not be afraid to talk to people. Another one of my closest friends that I met second semester was in my Japanese class and we ended up bonding like super quick. It's so crazy. It was just so like, I was not expecting it because first semester we had gone so differently because I was also in bigger classes. I think every single class I had first semester was at least 100 to 400 people. But then second semester I had two classes that were like 30 and under. So that also made it way easier. But yeah, it was just so cool when I actually got out of my head and talk to people and I realized that some people are actually willing to talk to you back so don't be afraid to do that. So through the psych program that I was in, we learned a lot about how important it is to network. I didn't really understand the importance of it, but it is definitely gonna be important for you to try to make connections with your professors, advisors, or just people in the staff for multiple reasons. These will become the people that will eventually either be writing your recommendation letters, whether it's for internships or when you're applying to grad school, or they could just be people that you go to for guidance whenever you need it. 
And these people can also become your mentors too. I didn't really know that I should have been forming relationships with my professors first semester, so I didn't really look into trying to talk to any of them. But from now on, I'm definitely going to be doing that. And at least through that psych program, I was able to get acquainted with the associate undergrad for psychology department. So now moving forward, at least, okay, I know her and she knows me, she knows who I am. I was in her program for like four months. So that's one thing that I'll have under my belt, I guess. And and I'm just gonna continue to keep trying to add more people, whether that's professors that I had and I liked and I feel like we could probably bond, or just with the future professors I'm going to have, I'm gonna definitely be trying to seek out long-lasting relationships with them. All right, so the tea, the real juice. Let's talk about relationships. I have a couple of different points I'm gonna to try to hit. First of all, do not expect to have some perfect relationship. Like off the bat, you're just gonna meet Prince Charming or Princess Charming, whatever. People are still as immature as they were in high school. There's not really that big of a difference. It's only been two months since you graduated. Nobody's transformed that much, especially just as a freshman. Don't expect the freshmen to have that mentality of, ooh, we're gonna be committed forever. This there's like probably about 1% of people who actually are trying to do that, but it's not that likely, so don't expect it. If we're talking about relationships that have already existed prior to college, I don't really have a fixed opinion on it. I think for some couples, it is okay to break up, take that time apart. Maybe you guys have been together forever, maybe you need that break. But also, some couples are fine and they are able to go to college, separate colleges, and keep that. It's not a one-size-fits-all, you know? Long distance could work for you, it could not, but that's for you guys to kind of figure out. But don't be scared of that, I guess, is my point. Don't be scared of having to start over or let go of something out of comfortability. And don't be scared to try to hold on to something too if you think it's worth fighting for. I just feel like you just need to be on the same page as your partner just so that y'all both know what y'all want to do and that there's no miscommunication. I suggest talking it out really thoroughly before, but be open to anything is really what I'm trying to say self-care is not an option it is a must it is a priority you have to make time for it figure out what it is for you that gets you in your calm happy place or whatever whether that's meditation or yoga going to the gym and working out or just going for walks find something that can be your peace so that you can stay sane because it's a lot college is hard it's not easy don't let them tell you it is honestly you gotta do what you gotta do to keep your head on your shoulders so first semester my Fridays were really empty I had two classes early in the morning I started my day at 9 a.m. and I was done by 11. So then I had the rest of the day myself. So my Fridays were literally just binge watch days for me. I would not even touch my laptop. Well, I would because I had Netflix on. But like I wouldn't do any homework or whatever. That's either for the days before or for Saturday and beyond because Friday was my day. I took that day and I designated it to be my self-care day. I'm just gonna do me, do what I gotta do. So like I said, find what works for you and please take care of yourself. Something big that I learned, again, my first semester, because that's really where all the learning I feel like took place for me. I mean, definitely I had some in second semester, but you know, whatever. Do not come in with too high of expectations for literally anything. So one of the biggest things that I was really disappointed with due to my own fault, I think, was how band was for me. So in high school, I was band nerd. I did marching band, concert band all four years. We were all close and we kind of all knew each other. Granted, we were less than 70 people, I'm pretty sure. I thought it was gonna be the same thing. I don't know why I thought that because UMass Amherst is literally 30,000 people. So when I got there and the marching band was, what, 400 plus, it was just so different. And all my expectations of us being like the closest closest family ever just did not it just didn't meet them, okay? It was nothing personal against my section either. I was trying a new instrument and that probably played a part, even though I was excited to play it, but maybe me not knowing how to play it kind of made me also just not want to do it subconsciously. The people in my section were nice. I just felt like there just wasn't that vibe. It is what it is, like, you're not gonna be friends with everybody, but I just really wish I hadn't told myself that I was gonna love it so much. I should've just came in with a blank mind of this could either go well or bad, but I was banking on that being my favorite thing and it didn't end up being that, so that was very disappointing for me um, but I learned from that another thing I mentioned this kind of earlier but I thought that I was gonna come in and literally become best friends with my roommate I was really craving that but that didn't happen which is okay like I said earlier you don't have to be best friends with them but again I had hyped myself up and I was like Yo, you're gonna meet your roommate you guys are gonna instantly click it's gonna be like that you're gonna be best friends but that didn't happen I'm realizing all these things quickly and I'm like yo okay another letdown another letdown and it was just really overwhelming 
overwhelming, you know? You can only be let down so many times before you have to think it's yourself, but it probably isn't. It's probably just that your expectations were too high, so just don't do that to yourself. To sum it up, it's not gonna be like the movies, okay? You're not gonna meet the perfect boy with a 4.0 GPA who happens to be the captain of the football team, but also the president of the Save the Turtles Club. You're not gonna join a sorority and then all of them become your best friends and then those are gonna become your bridesmaids in the future. And you're not gonna win the homecoming game, run out on the field, and then ride off into the sunset. Um, just know. I don't think I honestly thought it was gonna be like that. But I was kind of hoping for slightly similar, I guess. But you quickly will realize it's not like that. It's, I want to say high school 2.0. It's very different from high school, but there are obviously similarities. It's still school, you know? And I honestly blame movies for hyping me up. Just like high school, but we'll talk about that another day. Anyways, yeah, don't go in with too high of expectations in that sense. Another thing is your grades might not be perfect first semester and that's 100% okay. You have time to fix it. I've talked to many people and even like the staff I spoke to, they were all saying that almost every freshman goes through it so don't be surprised which leads me into my final point things can change things will change whether that's friendships that you are really banking on your major i've heard of people changing their major so many times throughout their four years which is perfectly fine and just other basic things like interests college is really the perfect place to kind of reinvent yourself i guess if you want to call it that because nobody knows who you are nobody knows what you did in high school if you were a band nerd if you were an athlete nobody knows that so you're coming in with a blank slate slate you're coming in with a blank slate basically and you get to do whatever you want any new things that you never got the chance to do so don't be afraid of that please don't be afraid of that because i feel like college is literally the time to discover your new passions or whatever just interest in general so take advantage of it all right guys so that's the end of my video thank you so much for watching if you made it to the end i appreciate you make sure to like this comment and subscribe and share this with anyone who you think might find this helpful i really hope you guys found this helpful because i just want to you know share like what i've learned and give that back to you guys so yeah if you guys want more videos like this definitely let me know i feel like i have a couple different ideas i can talk about more let me know if you have anything specific you want to hear about but yeah that's it i'm out